Ladies and gentlemen, before we get into this week's episode, I want to welcome our brand new sponsor, Lean Supper Club. Lean Supper Club are market leaders of the ready-made lifestyle food brand, offering breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, treats with full lab-tested calories and macros. I swear to God, right? I had their crispy peppered chicken dinner last night. Less than a fiver. It was phenomenal. It was unbelievable. It was like tongue and Cameron Diaz, right? Like around the time of the mask movie, not now because she's obviously geriatric, but it was it was unbelievable, right? They're a family run business. They started six years ago. They provide restaurant quality products all over Northern Ireland. To find them, check out your local spar, your local centra, Eurospar, Super Value, Cost Cutter, Vivo Extra. They're everywhere, right? They even have their own fridges in some places. Do you know why? Because no other food comes close. Lean Supper Club. Check them out. LeanSupperClub.com. Thanks a lot for the sponsor. Let's get into this week's show. I have roasts for you to as intros, right? I'm just gonna slag the fuck out of us. I had roast yesterday, mate. I'm not hungry. You alright? <laughs> still full from it? Still full from it. <laughs> My roast was lovely yesterday. Yeah. On the air fryer. What, what is a roast to you? Chicken or ham Beef. or what? Beef? Beef or lamb. Is that sirloin? No? No. Is that no. steak? No, no. It's a, like a joint. Like a big oh, is it? joint or a big fucking leg of lamb. Leg of lamb. You enjoy it? Just call it leg of lamb where you're from. Do you know what? See, even saying that, I just fucking picture a wee lamb in the field, and, and you're like, "Get the bollocks clean of them." Yeah, so I had good. to. Me and my wife were like, "How can you eat a lamb like that's fucking?" Know, Who I ever know. come up with I know. eating somebody's baby and then the last history for Sunday dinner? Do you ever eat a chicken fillet? <laughs> Do you? Oh, yeah, all the time. Do you like a chicken fillet? Do you like a chicken fillet that's in butter? Oh, right. Well, know what you're technically doing. You're dipping the ma into the baby and Fuck. then coating it. Never thought about it. So <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean? The egg is an egg of a chicken. So it's an, a fetus. Oh, so yeah. we're dipping the part of the ma that we've just killed into your baby, into your fetus, unborn chain, and then covering her and, thing, and eating the both of them. So Fucking hell. It's little odds. You can That's think I got all the way. Do you know what I mean? But see, even the word butcher, when you think about it, it's a fucking... It's somebody with a big knife cutting the bollocks out of something, do you know what I mean? The that's, a good, a, that's actually a good uh, sort of description of the Marshall. It is, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Are we recording? Uh, hi. That was good, yeah. Betsy. You have to put that in. <laughs> Paddy facts. You're hitting people Paddy in facts. jails. <laughs> you, you know a lot about a lot of things, don't you? You really do. But do you really? This I don't is know. People are, are you a bullshitter? Out. People, people will say you're bullshit, but then you're able to prove that the things... I take in a lot of meaningless shit. Yeah. I, like, there was a guy one time we were on a plane with, and I was able to talk to him about the three different types of mountain coats in a certain country, and he went to Andrea, I need to know that for my job. How the fuck does he know it? And Andrea went, I don't know. But I would sit and listen, watch a lot of fucking madness at <laughs> mm-hmm. nighttime to try and put me to sleep. So, like, I would watch open university shit, no to way. Because if you stick Surely all that's going to work your brain. Know, no, it's going to hate you. Yeah. Yeah. trying to go to sleep if, at 6 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> fuck. But she, 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 get if here I watched the like, alarm. Goodfellas or Freeveheart or something like that, I'd be eh, run about the house. So I always stuck on like BBC2 or fucking something like that. Educational to try and make me fucking get bored and then I'll go turn it off and fall asleep. But I would end up taking it in. Fair play, yeah. Do you I know end up mean? watching Babe Station. I'm trying to like lip read. Do you know what I mean? I've got really good at lip read in the past few months. after a while, an old wank. Put you asleep quicker <laughs> than watching Open University. <laughs> <laughs> right, joining me this week. Hello and welcome to the the One Two One Two podcast. Uh, you're probably wondering where Tyrone is. I knocked him out. He's laying on the ground unconscious. Tyrone's uh, in between Arma and Derry. Is that where it is? Oh, I, w- I would have said Arma and down, but I have no them. idea when it comes. Tyrone to Tyrone actually is connected to all of them. Is it mm, in a sense? Who won the All Ireland yesterday? Who won it? Hi, Kerry. Did Kerry win? The big Galway? Apparently so. I didn't Fucking watch hell. it. That's, I, I didn't, didn't hear that? a single thing about I it. Didn't Grim, watch it. Was it? Yeah. Worth watching? I didn't. Oh, I have it recorded on Sky, but 
I mean, I only really recorded because I wanted to see Armagh. You see, but a series linked yes. it by accident. So I watched Armagh and then uh, Derry obviously came up and yeah. I was like, oh, I'll watch Derry. Fucking Galway it slaughtered the two of them. Hi, mm-hmm. so hello and welcome to the 1212 podcast. Joining me this week, he's a professional boxer in the cruiserweight division, stand up comedian, future rapper, businessman, entrepreneur, among so many things. But still, people only know him as Labyrinth's cousin. It's <laughs> Mac Attack, <laughs> aka Thomas Edward McCarthy. Tommy McCarthy, thanks, round of applause. For for me. Round happen. of applause. Let's we'll have happen. to give our own round of applause. There's nobody else in the room. <laughs> and alongside him is one of my oldest friends in comedy. And I don't mean someone I've been friends with the longest. I mean, he's actually the oldest man in comedy. <laughs> Near enough. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't ask him for a high five he's only got four and a half fingers. I love him. <laughs> Paddy McDonald, ladies and Thank gentlemen. You. Yeah. Is it considered a slag when people talk about your finger, or are you? Uh, I'm is open it, to anything. Is it nothing? You don't well, mind? Well, my weight, my, my, my looks. You don't give a shit. Ginger beer. I mean, it's. Do you remember when we played that football match? Um, I, I'm putting you on the spot here, but you're saying you're okay talking about weight and stuff. Yeah. Do you remember? I, I, I'm saying this because I didn't actually say it. I'm just regurgitating. But remember, mm. we went in for like a halftime talk during the comedian match, and you says to Mickey Bartlett, "You're on, Mickey. You're going a bit bald at the back." And he goes, "Putty, you're going fat at the front." <laughs> it was fucking. <laughs> it was so blunt yeah. and so fucking cutthroat. But, but it was it was brilliant. Yeah. It was brilliant. Are you still injured? Are you all right? I'm always injured. I played an already match at Crusaders the other week. How'd that go? Was, you played that as I well, didn't you? Were you captain? I have, well, I just assumed the role of a right, captain. Nobody, Who's a captain for this walk up? Nobody was going to argue with them. <laughs> that's, you know that, I mean? that's me. Well, just Paddy Martin contest. made a game, fuck's sake. Did you? Salad you still got it, haven't you? I'm still fat as fuck, but Paddy, that's the problem. It doesn't matter, you have it, the it's, engine. It's, it's, you have the engine. Them, it's one of them things where you're like, I really wish I could, I wish I had it done more. Mm. Do you know what I am? Back in the going? day? Aye, like, like what do you mean done more like look like after yourself like playing for a way do you know what I mean from but you've was, always like, carried injuries haven't you aye but from 22 to 27 like I didn't try and get back and didn't do I was, whereas now somebody said to me years ago like I remember a fella when I was 18 he was 40 and he was brilliant right real brilliant player and uh, he says that's me that's me finished and I'm like why like you can still mm. play and all he's like you don't know what it's like I know I come out on a Saturday and I go to war in a match and mm. he says, but it takes me till Tuesday and Wednesday to recover. I now I know what he means. Yeah. Do you know, and like playing a match to me, it's a big undertaking. Like I have to go to myself, fuck me, what am I going to be like for two days? And genuinely... I think you played the whole match, did he? I, did I, I came off, off for, for 15 minutes the first half, then I played the full second half just because mm. I went, this is it, this is it, Michael Jackson, this is it. This is it. <laughs> you know, I mean, he died and didn't do this, is it, this is it, thank you. And I went out and I, I really struggled in the second half. I'd pulled an injury in my, my groin. Like, but I, I, my kids were watching me and I went, mm. I'm doing a frame. You know, Brilliant. And did it make you try harder and stuff? Did it? No, doing not really. Balls, <laughs> <laughs> no, it didn't. That was terrible. No. I shouldn't have been on the pitch because people were running past me very easily. But, but it was good to do. Yeah. I, good I, I finally realised a couple of. I, I, I'm going to say about two months ago that the bubble burst when I was playing football, and I was like, I'm not going to make it in the Premier League. Joe, you know when you always have that in the back of your head, like I'm, I'm 40 next December, right? I know you wouldn't tell by looking at me, but I'm 40 next December. And in the back of my head, I must be so fucking delusional. Because up until recently, I was like, I could, there's I still could that tiny wee chance. Still like, there's still still... I used to go to Saldi Park and be sitting in the stadium, like up until Shin maybe and... 31. And I was <laughs> going, <boots> going <laughs> they are going to say, Polly, come on the fuck. Like, it's going to happen. <laughs> like, even the, the fact that they're, they'll know your name. Yeah. But that, wasn't there a match one time when... The, the referee got injured and somebody came out of the stands and he was like I'm a full referee and he had everything with him and he had the full black kit and he had fucking the whistle he had the cards and everything and he went on and he actually ref the rest of the match it's just a joke I swear to god no it happened what happened it ha- it, yeah it happened yeah. I thought you said do you know what happened I thought you were going to no, tell me a joke I, I didn't know if this was like yeah I swear to god to... Yeah, what a freak what a, oh, you don't know what's real and what's fake no this 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 is god's honest truth like, but did you enjoy the match was it good I will, do you know what I only played about 20 minutes of first half of him mm. St- stole away goal and then the ball was coming in and I tried to head it in the net and it bounced down and then our fell and he scored he was like half after the assist that I had <laughs> and then can you remember it's probably there was a centre and I had to kick it to Chris Suter and mm. Suter ran on and the R fell and the opposing team got it and fucking what do you call him? Gillespie? Sure, at me. What the Get fuck Gillespie. was that? 
All right. <laughs> See them ex-bros. Come on, they're on here. They're fucking mental. They're taking, aren't they? Uh, like, they're taking it far too serious. Oh, so like, serious. Keith, Keith is very serious. I, I, I remember doing Ball Boy for Northern Ireland whenever he was playing for the team. Yeah. And like if he and Dow would have messed about me and joked and stuff, no, in the corridor. Mm. Keith Gillespie was like, that wall. Like, you know, <laughs> it was, there I was no that. crack. I was no, he was dead serious. I played in the Newry match against Liverpool Legends about four or five weeks ago and I was like oh there's Jason McAteer there's Don Hutchison there's this and there's that and I loved it I was in fucking cloud nine I played most of the match as well I I fucking played loads but every single time there was a decision or something happened or it was 50-50 them lads were fucking hardcore I mean I've never seen anything like it you don't expect it do you think relax but then that's how they met it Yeah, that's how they got to where they are you go to war you pull the tab on you go to war it's better you have the hunger for it or you don't Don Hutchinson was going to fucking batter somebody did you get playing for Liverpool no no No. why didn't you push that I don't know. Um, like Darren Mullen did the manager in Uri. He played for both. Basically, I probably, I know, I know. Lads, I'm I, sure I could have. Because you're but Liverpool I know, supporter. I know. Like, but just playing against them was, was I know was a hundred percent. But and I, mean, I scored as well. What like should you, you pay to get in to play at? Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what though? How did it come about? It's one of those ones where if you don't ask, you don't get. And I says to Darren Mullen, I was like, listen, Shane Todd's playing. Uh, Darren Matthews is doing the, the announcing on the tannoy. I was like, if there's anything I can do, give me a shout, then I'll come down. And it was a Sean Mullen? Whatever. Darren Mullen? Darren. Is that Darren's brother? Maybe. Because I met to play his brother. Uh, he's like a good lad too. Fella. Yeah. yeah. And um, They've asked me to play against Celtic, and it's like, it's a one thing. Like, I've always still, I always say, see if I won 10 million in ladder. I was going to go over to Celtic. The guy used to think this in the 30s. And I'm going to say to him, there's 9 million. <laughs> Let's do a <laughs> testimonial <laughs> match. No, 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 no. I, was go- I said to her, we only need a million pound. Right? Pay the house off. We only need a million pound. I give Celtic 9 million. And I would say to him, I want in the fucking official. Yeah. No, the poster. The sheet. Yeah. Right? I want a in number. I'm going to go fucking training every day with you, straight. I only need to play one match. One match in the season. But if I'm all right, they can play me in a couple of cup matches or something. <laughs> but I want to play one match. And I genuinely, in my head, would have done that. Like, it just to say that. No, not now. I, I, see, if I won 10 million, I would give, I'd give them 500 quid and say, give me a oh, season yeah. book. <laughs> I'll watch it from the yeah. start. Because, you know, <laughs> but back then, I was like, I it's still a patron. Yeah. You never know. I might turn out all right, you know, that way. But yeah. I always thought that. But they've said to me, they're new, he's playing Celtic, and they're like, do you want to play? And I'm like, Fuck me, like. Of course you would. Of course. Uh, and I'm, when I go down, I'm going to go into Sally. I'm going to say, listen, can I play the last five minutes or something mm. Sally, with the Sally Legends? Just to say yeah. it. Yeah. But a lot of them end up knackered as well. Joe, midway through second half, they're a lot of them are beat. Like they're mid forties plus, mm-hmm. and they're they're fucking they're algos. Like a lot of them see are. See, think. See, when I did drink with the footballers, like when they were playing football. I don't imagine names like, but like said John Hartson and Neil. <laughs> <laughs> See, I did in a drink, man, boys. Like they could fucking drink. Yeah, they can put away a pint can mm. Like I, I was fucking nan in the corner, and them two were fucking paying away, like twenty pints in, and I'm like, I can't keep up, lads. I went on battles ten pints ago, and then still not keeping up. You know, it was they were fit as fuck, like. Yeah, and some they could of the drink. But you imagine how good they would have been if. They had today's. Didn't do that. Yeah. Do you know if they had well, all the nutrition always had a back and problem. That's why he wrote it funny, yeah. Mm. But he was a cracking player, like mm. he would have been a cracking attacking midfielder, only he'd done his back end, so then he became a, like a defensive one. But mm. at one stage they Leicester had beat Liverpool at all. They were a good team, weren't they? And they were like second or third in the premiership mm. and he went in and went, Martin O'Neill said, Well, I wanna I wanna move and the manager was like he was on say I think he told me he was on seven grand a week, which was good money. Fucking this is in the nineties. Mm. They were third or second in the premiership. And his wee agent was a wee Jewish guy from London. And he phoned him and he says, listen, I, I want to move. I want to move. Martin O'Neill left. I, I just like working under Martin O'Neill. Can you see if you can get me up to Celtic? And his, his agent was like, Celtic, don't pay money. Like, do you know what I mean? Mm. You might get the same money if you're lucky or something. And he was like, just do something, just do something. And his agent went in. And I think the guy that was Pearson, it wasn't Pearson. I forget the name of the manager at Leicester at the time. But he was an ex-England guy like. Mm. And he says, why do you want to leave? We're third in the Premiership, but just beat Liverpool. You've been named in the Premier League Team of the Month. And he was like, oh, I'm not happy. And his agent came up and says, you train away. I don't need to go and speak to him. 
And he says he came out from the meeting and he went, you need to sit down. And he went, oh, fuck, what happened? Did they rip up my contract or something? He says, no, you need to sit down. He says, you sit down. He says, you're a multi-millionaire. And he says, what do you mean? He says, they're giving you 35 grand a week. Fucking hell. Bought you Lester, a car. Lester. To stay. To stay. Well, he's getting a yeah, and he was like, he, no, he, and he was like, <laughs> really? Get that or <laughs> no. And he was like, really? And he's like, they really don't want you to go. Like, it's fucking serious. And he says, and overnight, he says, he just went into a different bracket all the guy. It was just like, and it was because he wanted, he says, if I hadn't wanted to move, I'd have still been on seven grand mm-hmm. a week. Mm-hmm. But because I pushed and I was playing well mm-hmm. for the team and your mom wanted to keep me, and he, he got big money. And he says, and then the agent was like, we're doing property deals and all. I wouldn't have asked you before, but now you've got yeah. the money, you know. So he ended up buying like offices in London with your man and fuck, became a multi millionaire. Like. But he ended up moving to Celtic anyway. And um, when so he left Leicester, he was on 35 grand or 37 grand a week. Henrik Larson was the most paid at Celtic, and he was on 27 or something. So he had to take and a pay king cut king to go. Like, yeah. He had to take a pay cut to go to Celtic, yeah. and he took a pay cut like just to play for But that's that's the kind of thing. That, but what he was saying was, something was telling him to get the move. Mm. So it meant that he got like a season on big, big money yeah. at Leicester, and then went to Celtic. So Is that how you got yeah. the money for your charity match? <laughs> you give me 20 quid didn't it <laughs> here big comedian what uh-huh. the fuck I, I thought that uh, see when we did the gig we all did uh, Brackaville yep. a couple of weeks ago and that was your, your debut uh, first of all you enjoyed it didn't you oh, I loved it was it. lovely wasn't yeah, it was brilliant. I, I thought that you were just going to maybe dabble but you seem like you're are you going hell for well, leather you know, now or what, what? I like, remember when we spoke recently and mm-hmm. I was like I would love to try it if it had a went shit then I would have went oh, I was just dabbling but because mm. it went well I'm like one of the people ball it. running he's but got yeah. the bug he's got yeah, the bug of course, that we've of all course. got Which it's, it's a yeah. terrible thing because it's like it's like drugs you can't give it up you're addicted to it Yeah. there's times like and he he would have came to me and says I don't want to do this no more and I'm like you're too good to not do it yeah. don't, don't don't be pangling still in, yeah. twice a year I want to give up I go through phases and I'm and like I don't want to do this anymore and in fact the guy was off for two weeks and I swear to God coming to the end of the two weeks I was like I need a gig I need a gig it's like that's an objective thing yeah like the the thing what was good with that Brackerville it was like you were on it and then Fenton and and Dave were on it too that's right so that's kind of even like on social media has opened me in their new section of it the the Mm -hmm. comedy section though because I didn't even know him, so yeah. I started following him on Instagram and then they're sharing things about comedy nights and all. And, and then Fenton asked me to do the show that you're doing here That's on right, Thursday. Thursday. So I'm on I seen, I seen yeah. the poster of that the other day and I was like, fuck me, I thought you were just going to do like one or two you're gigs here and there. Yeah, let her know where he is. <laughs> he is, <laughs> I, fucking, I'm doing 40 minutes at the start and he's doing three at the end. <laughs> Fuck's sake. <laughs> and uh, I, got, I got, well, Fenton asked me to do that and then. Um, this fellow asked me he said they're doing a comedy night every Sunday of every month and did I want to do it next month in um in Filthies brilliant I was like oh, 100% and I then I'm going to ask the well. are you going to be on then I think so yeah so but, uh, uh, how how did you feel in the build up to it were you, were you shitting yourself or were you alright not you really I'd, I'd said this to Shane was on his show the other day and um just the whole setup before, you know, going on stage, it was like, it wasn't a strange environment because it was similar to, like, when you're fighting. Mm-hmm. Everyone's in a changing room. And, um, there was, like, I thought coming down was going to be cases of beer and all. And those just, just five of us sitting in the kitchen. Just, just, you just you hoping for fucking yeah. tea bags. <laughs> and there was a wee case of water. It's like, it's like fuck, wait, it's just like, like, any fucking... It was like fighting in a leisure yeah, centre, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, and then, um... <laughs> Before I was trying to remember, nobody was gonna say in my, in my mind. And then um, I remember before Dave went out, and he like it was now like getting ready to go out, and he went right. Oh. And he turned around, like, lads, why do we do it? Can you remember? He said, yeah, like, why, do we, why do we do it, lads? But obviously, no, that's just the nerves. Yeah. And I think it's just like a fader going it, because that's mm-hmm. the way boxers get on. Like, what the I here, like, telling jokes. Uh, no, like, <laughs> <laughs> but see the way he felt going it, yeah. that kind of made me feel a wee bit more at ease. Because like, he's, he's doing it away. Like. He's doing it away, mm. and I felt them kind of nerves. But like, I had those nerves of going and 
getting your face punched in. They, the worst that could happen here is nobody laughs. Hmm. And I wouldn't care. To, but mm -hmm. um, then the star laughed and I was like, I'm loving it. Yeah. I, I fully shadow box before most gigs, see, just to get out a wee bit of sort of nervous energy yeah. or to kill a bit of adrenaline, I think. But I fully, I, I shadow box and I tell myself, I'm like, you're the fucking best comedian in the country here. I try and just <laughs> put myself into this frame of mind or this trance to just go out there and just be like, even no matter how confident I am or how unconfident I am or underconfident or whatever the word is and no matter how shit a day I have, I'm like, if I do a wee bit of shadow boxing before and <laughs> tell myself yeah. I'm brilliant, then I <laughs> usually go out and have a better game. Like at the start, when you went out and you were doing your wee bit at the very start and I could just hear them all laughing like mad and I was going, Jesus, no, like, Sean's killing it here. Are they going to... Be like it's my <laughs> thing gonna land here, like I, because mm. I couldn't even really hear what you were saying, but I could just hear him and stitches. Mm. So, and it's like you've said the I didn't as I said I couldn't <laughs> hear your jokes, but I knew that the bar was set there, and I was going yeah. Jesus, they're letting the novice a novice comedian <laughs> come in here. <laughs> Is he gonna? But him? I ain't gonna drive up like I was talking to him on the drive up. You know, obviously he rang me says I'm doing the gig, and I was going fucking hell like for a gig to go to. I was going like a GAA club. I know, I know. Drone, you know. I know. There's some comedians with panic about doing that. And mm -hmm. But you did, he didn't, Tommy didn't know any different. So it's mm -hmm. just, I'm going to do comedy tonight. Mm -hmm. But I seen the confidence in him on the way up. You know, I've seen other people who are about to do a gig and they panic a wee bit. And there's a few other ones at, at the minute that are, they're, they're trying to do it and they're asking me advice and stuff. And who am I to give advice to anybody? But I'm sort of just saying to them, listen, just do it. But I could see the confidence in him. So I'll, I'll, he says, well, I'll do my material, I'll tell you. And I says, no, I want to just see you when you're on stage. Yeah. And it was probably best that he'd done that mm -hmm. because I didn't know what was coming. Made me part of the audience. Mm. And as soon as you got the first one out, I went, he's going to be fucking dead on here. Mm. Because it was when you when you come out and you said what you said and you done what you done, I'm not going to say your material. But if Tyrone laughed at it, I was like, fuck, what will it be like in mm. West Belfast? You know, <laughs> it's like when I do my West Belfast material outside of West Belfast and people laugh, when I do it, oh, you know it's going to connect big time people when you are get like, home. Fuck, yeah. you know, I done it at Frankie Boyle and I done it at Jason Manford, 5,000 fucking people from West Belfast and I get up and do West Belfast stuff and they're like, fuck, I think you can feel <laughs> yeah. it coming back. Yeah. So I was like, Tommy doing that at the Fela will be fucking brilliant yeah you're supporting mm. him aren't you at the yeah. Yeah. so uh, he's getting spoiled a wee bit because yeah. he done that gig and then he done, gigs. wait until he does the pavilion <laughs> to five people and there's nobody laughing because they're there to see their mates and then he'll yeah. go what the fuck's that and well, everybody, I think I have skipped a cue you know what I mean you have you have, you have, you have. Yeah. there's people probably going fuck yeah. cunt he's on the fellas <laughs> doing away you know like but though it's like I was like talking to my wife about this it's the same thing with the YouTube boxers, you know, mm. like Jake Paul never fought in the fucking in the Davenish at four o'clock in the day. Do you know what I mean? Well, you don't know that yet. <laughs> but he, <laughs> well, he hasn't. He hasn't yet. Do you know what I mean? He still made. He made, but he's straight in because he's built his profile doing YouTube. He's straight in tapping builds and making big donal. So, I'm. The Jake Paul account. <laughs> in a sense, but there's also... But it's because I built my profile. Yeah, of course. Kind of you know, you have a profile, but it's not even just a profile. If you hadn't been good, I wouldn't have put you on mm. the field. I wouldn't have done that on you. Yeah. Do, do you know what I'm saying? And I say Hopefully this isn't an elaborate prank. But he sent me... What's he? It's <laughs> can't we get Tommy up this day. He thinks he's brilliant. I still <laughs> would have put you on in the bracket. Well. <laughs> he, you'd be mad that they added somebody can punch a fucker, do you want? <laughs> no. <laughs> he just likes... He likes playing pally. He just, he just likes getting his pally. He's not getting the devilish car park. You know what I mean? It's been happening for years. And trust me, it wouldn't be the first time I've got my pally knocked in. Do you know what the feel of one year? They wouldn't let me in. Huh? Do you remember my white van I drove for the rust all over mm -hmm. and had patchwork quilt? I yeah. loved this van, like loved it. Do you know it was like a dog that you would have that has half an ear and three <laughs> legs and you won't put it down? <laughs> I loved this van, like loved it and wouldn't get rid of it, but it was a fucking mess. You won't have seen it. Mm -hmm. Like I'll show you a picture of it and you'll go, Jesus. When I drove it, people genuinely thought I was a traveller, like and I, and I used to drive it everywhere. So I went down to do the Devnish with um Diego Kane. And I pulled in in the van, bounced out with a rucksack, and the security staff were just looking at me, and I went to walk on in, and your mum went, where the fuck are you going? <laughs> and I went, in there, and he went, where's your ticket? And I went, I, I don't have a ticket, I'm on. He went, right, they're on. They genuinely wouldn't let me in the building. <laughs> right? And then people started to queue up for the gig. Queue over, mate. 
Yeah, <laughs> and I, I was like, what am I going to do here? Like, genuinely wouldn't let me in. And I was like, no, you need to go and see somebody. He says, you need to fuck off. Get in your car and fuck <laughs> off. And I was like, this is fucking mad. I went round the side. I genuinely went and got a fucking stick, a fucking plunge bar out of my fucking van. And I wedged open the exit doors to get into the building. Fuck's sake. At the back. Like, genuinely broke in to the fucking funny. gig to do the fucking feeling. I was scundered. It would have got this stage where the feeling stuff would have arrived and I could have probably yeah. got in. But I was scundered and yeah, wouldn't have yeah. me in. Do you know what Fuck. I mean? Was this with Manford or? No, this was with Frankie J- Boyle. Jake Jack O'Kane, O'Kane in the Dabney show I had. After Frankie Boyle, we started getting bigger acts and Frankie Boyle was very controversial. And I think was Frankie in the park or was he in the park? Yeah, yeah. Falls Park, wasn't he? And uh, what happened was we basically, and my first after nine months, I fucking asked, could I do the fella because I was from West Belfast, and they were like, okay, we need a comedian, and I was like, I've just gigged with Des Bishop in Dublin, I can ring him for you, and they went, would you? And I rang him and says, Des, would you do the fella? And he went, yeah, I done it a couple of years ago. I'll fucking do it and all. And they were like, that was amazing. Do you want to do support? And I went, oh, I don't tell him, but... So they didn't tell him, and he brought his brother up, and, he, and I was on the bill, and he was like, all oh, right, that's dead on, Paddy, you can do it. But nobody in West Belfast really knew I was doing comedy, so I was doing name months. Yeah. And I used to do a character, I have a photo. That's you, right, you were, yeah. With a balaclava and a large jacket and a gun, right? <laughs> <laughs> he says a character he was caught one night in a bar <laughs> he was in the he had no choice <laughs> so <laughs> started telling went, jokes right, I'll go out dressed up I had the character in more clothes he was called he was called Terry Rust right, right. so we will go out and do Terry Rust and see how that goes and then I'll pull it off and do whatever right so I went out on stage with the balaclava the lair jacket and the gun and everybody in the fucking tent. This is outside Cali Sellers, thousand people. And I walked out and somebody went, shh. There's a statement being read. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody went quiet. And I fucking went, well, I done this whole fucking character. And everybody's going, what the fuck was that? And I went, was nobody's, nobody's <laughs> laughing, right? So everybody's going, what the fuck is yeah. this? And I went, right, this isn't working. And I went, right. And I run off the stage, pulled that off pulled the jacket off and run back on the stage and somebody shouted, Paddy, get off the fuck the razor. <laughs> <laughs> and people were shouting like, what are you doing? Because there was no form. I was sort of emceeing it. They were going, Paddy, what the fuck are you doing? And I went, shut the fuck up. And what happened was I was driving the black taxi at the time and this girl was in the taxi and says, are you going to the fella? And I went, yes. I mean, are you going to the fella? And she went, yes. It was like three days before and here's me, what are you going to? She says, the comedy night. I always go to the comedy night. I says, I'll see you there. I'm going, are you going? And me actually, I'm on stage. And she went, all right, dead on. And I went, no, you am. And I got the book out. I just had it dog-eared and all. And I says, look. <laughs> but my photo wasn't it. It was just my name. Mm. And I says, that's me, you And she went, all right, dead on. I mean, no, it is, it is. When we get down to Castle Street, she went to give me the one thirty, And I says, keep the money. But when I'm on stage, on the night, you give me have a to give me the one thirty. Double and the, Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and she went, right, okay. So I opened for that and she just squealed. And my mate was in the audience, went, I'm getting the money for you. And he got up and everybody busted out laughing. And that broke it. And then I fucking that done it. The, and then everybody's like, I didn't even know you were doing comedy. Like the door staff were going, I didn't even fucking know you done this, no. Do you know? Yeah. So See, Paddy so it's like, it's like yeah. a segal. Paddy getting well, their fail early on. And now he's passing the pattern to me. That's well, it. I always think that you should bring people in that, that, that's from West Belfast. You know, it, I've always found it hard to try and get people in to do it. Whereas this year, it's my show, so I can sort of yeah, say he's on. So there's you and Karen Bartlett and Bruno Damon, and they're all from West Belfast. Mm, so that's brilliant. I'm, I'm promoting it that way. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. I, I had my opening joke member when you said to me, and I was like, should I go and get a fight in the field? So I may as well do a set. <laughs> But I swear to God, everyone I've talked to, they're all saying it. He can't get a fed, so he's doing comedy. So I've, uh, I can can't use it. head now. No, but you can. Yeah. You, you can. can still do it. Still do it. But it'll be because shit. Like, no, but it's going to be. No, you, you only think that because there's going to be so many people that don't know that bit. Mm-hmm. So you have to uh, you have to say, who, believe it or not, you're probably going to find this strange, but there will be people in that audience that actually don't know who you are. No way. 
There, there will be people that don't know who you are. Not up the West. Like, like, there's people going to be at it don't know who you are. What's he putting that coffee? What's he putting that coffee? What's he putting that coffee? No, no, no. Because people, people, will, people will bring people. Like, there might be the fella, and he'll go, that's Tommy McCarthy and his wife. Who the go, fuck's Tommy McCarthy? No, James McCarthy's brother. That's for fucking stoked. Is he from Derry? But it's... Don't even... Like, there'll be a small section probably who'll know me because they're to all my friends and family who's bought the tickets. Oh, yeah. But the rest of it, <laughs> I'm not just saying the there'll be a lot of people yeah. don't know me. Yeah, and that's the people you want to hit. Yeah, yeah. Because not everyone that's... follows boxing. Like, boxing mm. is actually a small pocket. Like, there's some people think it's that's aggressive. I yeah. It's hard yeah. to keep up with too because it's on so many different channels now yeah. as well. And if people aren't paying for those channels, it's hard to watch. Do you mean yeah. you used to get on ATV every yeah. Saturday night, didn't you? Or the oh, big fights anyway. I used to just go down and watch it at the corner of the street. <laughs> yeah, CCTV. <laughs> All I know about boxing is because my dad was a boxer. And you uh, boxed as well, didn't you, Freud? I say I boxed. I went training in a boxing fucking right. environment. See, Maggie Hogan said to my dad in 1993, he went. Stephen Hawking's brother. Oh. Paddy, you know what you have to do. Paddy is very good at hitting the bag. <laughs> he hit Nobody. me. That's why I'm like this. <laughs> Mickey would be very brunt with the end telly. Mickey was the coach of the Ireland team. Oh, is right. he still involved in the Ireland team? I um, don't know if he is or not. Not, not so much now. Like, I think he took a step back. Yeah. But he was he, he was my coach at the Commonwealth Games. Right, mm. so so he would know who I'm talking about. Mickey would tell you if you were good or not. I mean, there's no point in him fucking saying, oh, you're a brilliant kid. It, it, didn't, it wasn't like that back then. Mm. It was like, Kid, you need to lose about fucking two stone. But I, 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 t- I used to say to my dad, see a Wednesday night, they take the boys in to play football. And he says, your Patrick is like, when am I playing football? He knew, he could mm. see in me that I preferred football, football. and hurling mm. and all. So he said to my dad, you're trying to make him be a boxer. One, he struggles to get his weight down. And two, I don't think he's going to make it. He's me short arms. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> So it was one of them ones where you would have said it. So I did, I trained. But I, I was very, very lucky because my dad, who he was, when I went training and there all the kids get sent home, I stayed on. And I'd have been with Bram McGee mm. and fucking... Damien Kelly. Damien and Kelly. And that fella Lowe was... A, they All the pros in there and they were all big names in boxing. And I get in the ring and, you know, you pick the exercise and I got to pick the, and train with them and all. So I grew up with boxing... Even though I wasn't a boxer or going to be a boxer, right. so I know it. Yeah, do you know that way? But I sort of went away from it. But I love watching boxing, and I always went to the the seniors in the Ulster Hall. My dad always remember love going to watch it. So I know a bit about boxing. So to me, it's not strange to know all these things. You know, yeah, of course. You know, Tommy was a wee fucker growing up. That's how I knew who he was. <laughs> he was a money joke. What was it, or what is it about West Belfast that produces these fucking brilliant boxers? There's, there's too many. Do you know what? I've uh, had this conversation with loads of people because up in where we were in Brackville, I think there was one boxing club over. Right. I can't even remember the name of it, but Club Cummins. Cummins, Cummins went, yeah. yeah. And then. Oh, was that where he fought out of? He's from Cold Island. Cold Island. Island. Yeah. But like in Atlanta Dune alone there's three boxing clubs. And then you walk down the Anti Town, there's an R three. You go to Turf Laws, there's an R three. Like there's just boxing clubs everywhere. To keep kids out of trouble or what? I don't know. I don't it's know. one of them things, there's just there was je- uh, probably boxing yeah. was one of them self things like that where they, they generated boxing was always cross community, I remember. Mm. It was the only thing cross community. Like I played football and it wasn't cross community in a sense. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It really wasn't because you played for. Whereas I remember boxing, like I would go with my dad to the Ulster Hall, and he was talking to a fella from Sandy Row, and he was talking mm. to a fella from Shagal, and then another fella from Palomina, and you know it didn't come in yet for mm. some reason. Because it's like discipline and respect <laughs> yeah. together, yeah. isn't it's it? Just boxing the training. The, pol- the politics of the door. So hang on, Instagram it says like a boxing gym is the only place where you'll see a criminal, a policeman, a soldier. A rebel, all a black mm-hmm. man, a white man, an Asian man, all together in the one place, and they're all mates. Cause like everyone's in there with the same kind of objective. Mm-hmm. So there's no, there is no. There's no politics on it. Yeah. Zero. I mean. yeah. But I, 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 in saying what you're saying, I think growing up, with, like people would say, we had Belfast, blah blah blah. I had older sisters. I didn't have an older brothers, and I have a brother who's in his twenties, so he was never around. Somebody done something to my older sisters. My dad opened the door and fucked me out like a pit bull. You know, it got to mm. the stage where 
you know, y- you had the fucking fight sort of thing. And plus there was nobody there, as you say, you had no older brothers to back you up. No. So you probably had to fight even everyone. more. Or fight fight everyone. Everyone. Oh, and please. the thing is, in the West, the, the respect people get for being fight. a boxer, just being like, he can fight when mm. you're a kid. Yep. And then, fuck, he's a boxer. And then if you actually win something, it's like, I remember in school, no, he's Hampton champion. And I was not before I started, but I said, oh, fuck, he's a real deal. Like, he's Hampton champion. And then, You're almost like locally famous then, yeah. or famous in your school. And then if you go on the win in All Ireland, it's like, Jeez, he's All Ireland he's champion. Big. Like, oh, they talk about he's the, he's mm-hmm. the first fellows are who, like, my father in law's friends, still talking about winning a schoolboy All Ireland. And like, he's in his 60s. Yeah. He was Irish champion. And it's like, you, you were talking about fighting and stuff there. You came down to our house about a year ago. I think it was when the when we lived in our old house and we, we came. You had a coffee out the back. Do you know what it was? You brought Easter eggs for my wee lads. Mm-hmm. Do you remember? Mm-hmm. And you told me and Diona a story about you fighting somebody in the traveling community. Mm-hmm. Have you told that story in a podcast? Or are, you, do you, are you allowed to talk about it or what? We because don't talk about it because if... If I talk about it again, it's going to open up all wounds. But right. the gist of it, I think I told you about it. We, Did I? if it goes again, I'll, I'll for about um, fifteen minutes laughing at play it. For you, Do you know what I mean? <laughs> but genu- it, what happened was there was an incident that happened with my cousin, and I ended up having to fight a traveller. And he when I beat him, I had to fight his brother, and then I had to fight his other brother. Then I fought his dad, and it was like, when does this stop? And it was like it doesn't stop. They just keep coming. It was like Pokemon. You got to get them all. You got to fight them all. <laughs> <laughs> And I just remember standing outside, like it went on for three years. Like seriously, it was a joke amongst my mates. They were like, "Who are you fighting tonight?" Just, Do you know who are you fighting tonight? And it went did on you have for to years. go up the the set? No, they always found you. Like they found me before there was tracking devices. There he is, Paddy. Paddy. <laughs> they found you. You know, like I remember going into this shop, McGranley's in Lanadon, the wee shop down in Carrigard. And I walked into the shop, unsuspecting that anything was going to happen or didn't think. Say this was like a year after the first thing happened and the farm pulled in. And I still never thought anything. And the guy in the shop went, there's four fellas standing out there waiting you. And I went, right. And I turned around, look, I was 16. And I went out and I had beat three of them. And I went, who's this? And I went, it's my dad. And I went, <laughs> oh, Jesus. like a man was 50s. <laughs> and I went, no, I'm not feeling mom. Stop with that one. He can run. He can run. He can run. He can run. He can go around and fight my dad. I'll get my dad, and you can fight my dad. I'm not fighting your dad. And they were like, "No, you have to. It's like a family thing." And I was like, and I remember hitting them and going, "This isn't good. Like, they're all gonna jump me." And they never did. No, I just they the never did. It was always one on one, but went on for years anyway. And then say there was like, I went away. Did I go? Away? I don't. I hadn't went away to America yet, because they probably would have found me there too, but. I came out of the DC, blocked, and we went up to the chippy, and I was literally couldn't even hold the curry chip up. And I remember the van pulling up, and the doors opened on the side of it, and this guy got out, and I looked at him, and I went, I know his face. And they were like, right, you're fainting and fancy. And I went, fancy. <laughs> I went, is that Francie Barr? Carried the fucking flag in the Olympics, didn't he? Like, sorry. He was, <laughs> he's the first traveller to go to him. I says, you want me to fight him? And they went, yeah. And I went, and they went, do you concede? And I went, oh. And they went, okay. And they shook my uh-huh. hand. And I went, <laughs> see if I had a conceded fucking all them years ago. Oh, yeah, yeah. this is mean that would have been it done. So you, you've give up. Thing. We won. And I went, oh, you just won. <laughs> fucking far off. <laughs> and Francie was like, fuck, go away from goal. <laughs> you fought about 70 of them. I swear to God. Like, it wasn't even, but I mean, I have respect with them. I mean, I could go in and tell the, the camp. I've done this before. I had a van and I had no insurance on it, right? And the cop stopped me on the candy way. I turned off. It was a Saturday, I never forget this. I, and I had no insurance. I just bought the van. I was trying to set up a wee business. And they had me off, oh, fuck. And the cops pulled me in. And I let on to be a traveller, <laughs> right? <laughs> And the cops two of them went away. Probably, right? <laughs> they went away. They went away. The the and they were all top. And the two cops. And I could hear one saying the other one, I'm not taking him in because. He'll disappear, and the arm was going to shut and face you about it. No, but I had two dogs in the van that were bouncing about. No, it looked apart, right? <laughs> so the other one came over and he says, "Listen, I want to take you in. He doesn't. It's a Saturday. He thinks you'll not. Where are you going to? Well, I couldn't say I was going to a house because then I would show where I lived. Mm-hmm. So he says, "I'm going to the camp in the Glen Road." And the man, 
we're going to follow you up. And once you get out of the van, don't drive it again. <laughs> and I went right dead on. So I'm driving up, I mean, they'll probably pull away. Mm. Then. And I drove up a Glen, and they came right up, and I went, these cunts are fucking, like, proper fun. So I swung into the camp. When I swung into the camp, they all came out of the <laughs> car, most, but then the cops fly in behind me. And they're just sitting in the car looking, and I mean, I literally have to get out and walk into the caramel here. <laughs> walk into the caramel. <laughs> and your mom went, What the fuck are you doing? Look at I went, Listen, they follow me. You've brought them in the art fucking camp. You fucking, you tell me now, you mean fucking enemy. Listen, you know who the fuck I am, right? That means I'm down to get them on. Make me a cup of tears until they fuck off. And he went, What do you mean to me? I let on. I'm, and here he was, What do you mean you let on? So then they were going to start the whole fucking thing again. Then he made me a cup of tea. But the fucking came in and they said, and I don't do ever do that. You don't know what we're doing in here. <laughs> and you drove and you brought cops in here and <laughs> brought attention. They're in their fucking so I was, up I was, So it ended up with a year. It ended up I sold them the van. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and they give them it practically for nothing to try and get away with it. So I phoned my man and says, you may come up and get me. I'm up the trap. What are you doing about it? Sold him a van. It's a long story. Put the two dogs in and get in the van. My man, what happened? I says, look, I was driving that van, no insurance. I told you not to do it. I know, I know, hear me, but don't worry about it. I got away with it. And here's my man. Well, how did you get away with it? I says, I let on to be a traveller. And she went, right. And hear me. So the cops and I told her what happened. And we were driving to the road. She didn't say anything, phrases. And I get down the house and I went, you're not proud of me. Like I was able to get myself out of trouble there. And she went, the cops thought you were a traveller. <laughs> they looked at you and thought you were a traveller. <laughs> 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 it's time to be fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, genuinely, I never had any bad experience with them. Hmm. You know, but it, it was one of them things. If I had a New Year's ago, I'd have just went to your lad's eyes, oh, man. Right. That's it. Don't see it straight away. I remember I was about 10 or 11 and there was about 10 of us that hung out with each other. And we used to meet in the park and stuff at the weekends. And there was a girl who was hanging about with us. And she was like lovely girl talking and stuff. And then one day a van pulled up and we were all just like talking, you know, just normal local Lurgan accents. Lurgan accents, I see. <laughs> you can't tell the difference. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> the van pulled up and then it was all uh, Siobhan come over for your dinner and she was all here guys I'll be back in a wee minute daddy come on what's the crack I'm gonna come over later I'll get it later and we were all like what the what's fuck going has on? just happened yeah. this girl's like schizo or something is, like, that, how, know, is that how you met Fiona then <laughs> that's how I met Fiona <laughs> <laughs> see we all thought that was a dairy accent Charles it's not <laughs> she's a member of the travelling community I, I was in Turkey we had a place in Turkey and when we first, I had it for two years and I hadn't furnished it. And in Turkey, they don't lock the door unless it's furnished and everything's seen sealed for. So my apartment was just sitting open. And a few of the guys had apartments in the same thing where like, cunts are stealing stuff out of your apartment, like the organizing and mm. remote and all. And I was like, right. But the guy from Turkey rang me and he was like, you have to come over. The government thinks I'm doing something wrong here. You've paid for this and you have to come over and get it. I mean, right, okay. So book me, my ma, my wife. We only had Podrick at the time. My sister, her kids, she had just went through a divorce. And my ma and my younger brother, Sean. Sean was only about 11 or something. So I land over to Turkey with three women and all these kids. And the Turkish guy's like, oh, you're from Ireland and all, brilliant. And all. We go for a drink. I went, no, no. So first three days I spent going out and getting furniture. And Aye. and he was going, you know, take it. I mean, no, not until everything's sorted. We're staying in my mate's apartment. My kids are ragging it. So I want to get down there done. And then I'll go f for a drink with you. It was dead on on the Wednesday. All sorted. And your man came in and he went, I'm not even going to ask you for I mean, I wouldn't go for a drink now because I've sorted everything. Apartment sorted. Mum will go for a drink. Me and him went to the beach. I drank and fuck. I drank fuck. I like fuck. Yeah. And he was going, Jesus, you are a proper Irish man. I was worried about you and all you didn't drink. We go for dinner tonight. We bring the families. And then, you mean, right? So we went to a restaurant. All the women and kids had to sit at this different table. Right. And all the men said the thing. So he was introducing me to his family. He was going, Watch him drinking, so he's got me five minutes. I'm not gonna have a no. Just Jerry McCann, was it? <laughs> right. So we get into the restaurant anyway, and uh, next minute he says, We're sending the women home, right? Dead on. And he set down a big clear glass of drink, and I lifted it, knacked it, and it was raggy, wasn't foggy, and it was for the whole table, so like a wee bit of like rag of fuel. And he went, I don't believe you just drank that, that's raggy, like you're that's you, you're fucking in trouble here. I mean, <laughs> may have to get your stomach pumped. I don't remember anything. Next morning, woke up in the apartment and just silence. My sister came in, just shook her head and was like, you've no idea what you done last night. <laughs> they was like, why would I do? You're just, what did you not do? And I was like, 
what, what happened? He says, your man crashed his car. You oh, drove it and everything. And I was going, what? Yeah, we're in a nightclub. You caused mayhem. What do you mean the nightclub caused mayhem? So the nightclub, I, mean, I was asking to go to the disco. She, Jackie stayed because I was full. And she says, we're at the disco and you're pulling all the Union Jacks down. And it was all full English. <laughs> and they're going, what's your man doing? And I was going, come on, man. Doing push-ups and my knuckles in the middle of the dance floor. And all the Turks are going, this guy's a rat. Right? They found a Celtic tap and they put it down. And I sit down and just looked at the Celtic tap. And then she says, fucking your mom was black too. Christ, this car. The cops came. The cops, I wanted to drive the cop car and all fame the cops. Now. So in Turkey, all the Turkish people were calling me Rambo. <laughs> because the way I was, because Jackie says I tied the Celtic tap around my head, not right. They're calling me Rambo, and all the English were calling me Peggy. <laughs> Fuck they sake. all thought well, I was a traveller. See, like in, in England, they think like, travellers are just Irish people, people? or just. Uh, mm-hmm. They're just mad Oh, uh, uh, well, that's what they thought I was. <laughs> there, my, oh, one of my cousins in England was like, oh, you can always tell Irish girls, they've always got long hair, big earrings, as they. No, home that's travellers I guess that's <laughs> different <laughs> you know, so twice in my life guns. even in Turkey I was good. <laughs> they thought I was what <laughs> you know what I mean I'm a celebrity in the, tra- uh, the traveller community I don't know if you've ever saw my viral video calling them out it's on YouTube like, who, oh, you, oh, called you called out a traveller you called did you no I, yeah and, um, did they come a fair day they done a, a reply back but we're all mates it was all stage like, but mm. people were panicking <laughs> and then Obviously, travellers who didn't know that me and the Joyce's were friendly, they didn't know, but they loved it because obviously there's always infighting now in yeah. the community. Yeah. So the families who didn't like the Joyce's loved it because... They thought you were dissing them. And then the Joyce's loved it because they're like, fuck, it, they want to be like us. But see, for weeks after it, I was, the vans were pulling up with, with, on me. I was going, oh, fuck, see, Here we I felt go. something hit <laughs> Hey, you, come here, you. You making videos. <laughs> I yeah. can see straight away. I can see. <laughs> I, was put, I was putting foot diesel in the Black's Road garage and fell jumped out. Big, he must have been about six foot five, but about 20 stone. Big ring roll. Come here, you. Like, oh, fuck. You making videos. And then I just was like getting no pet mentally prepared. Like, here we go. I went, yeah. Oh, that was so funny, Big Bad. Can you get a picture with your mics in there now? No. Big fuck. But it happened so many times. Like. Yeah. I, I bought a uh, Travellers, like, Joe and they used to fight each other and they filmed it and all. Oh, I, I bought, like, a pirate DVD uh, yeah. almost on YouTube. Or, sorry, on, They're all on eBay on YouTube one day. now, but you yeah, yeah, you years had to ago, buy them on eBay. I bought them so on eBay. It was about oh, fucking 30 quid or something. And I had it and then I lent it to everybody. Once I watched it, everybody was like, here, lend me it after, lend me it after. Do you like fucking yeah. porn when you were 14? I actually knew one of them. I used to work in the door with one of them. Yeah, yeah, one of the bare knuckle fighters, like, and he, he was serious, like, mm. proper, proper bare knuckle. And we went to one of it. It's brutal, absolutely. Yeah. I've been trying. Brutal. To, I've been trying to get tickets for you. That's <laughs> <so> <laughs> I was invited. Because I grew up with travelers, yeah. no, like on the boxing team, and under his boxing, traveling community dominated because mm. they're all boxing and they don't go to school fighting. like the full time. Just, just fight. Full time boxers. Mm. Going, Let's get my ticket trucks. Hey, can I come down and watch the fights? But still, still, you have I to bring I only got invaded because I fitted it. <laughs> <laughs> you were the referee, you weren't you? Uh, like, yeah, we're, we're you fighting Penny. Penny's been 70 days, you know. <laughs> oh, I loved it. I oh, was fucking class watching them. They were brilliant back in the day, like. No, oh, I. Wasn't it? Really good. I, and then they all, they're all on YouTube, and I've spent friggin' years ago, months, just down this rabbit hole, lads and everything. Yeah. I was up to date with all the fights. <laughs> I was asking all the lads on the team, so when's Bernie fight? <laughs> There's actually Bernie a Bernie knuckle do. organization, though, isn't there now? Like a professional. Aye, but that's boxing now. Well, not boxing, but like it's, it's not just travelers, it's like yeah. proper saddle fellas. Old, like UFC, yeah. uh, like MMA fighters all would be in it. Like your girl, what do you call your blonde girl, was in the UFC until recently. She was like one of the pin-up kind of poster girls for women's fighting in the UFC. And she's now fucking Is transferred she? over and she's fighting bare knuckle. Fuck Unbelievable. Fuck. But uh, it's big big money, I think. I think they're getting paid more than yeah, the they're UFC. Yeah, so they're getting good though. But they're breaking fucking knuckles and everything after two or three days. Instead of people's faces out there. Is it, yeah. They're is it worth it? I know, I know. But then... Scarred for life. Money in it. Oh. See, when, when Tyrone and Paddy Barnes were here... We had like an arm wrestling competition. And oh, don't we start now, now, shall we? 
Paddy <laughs> beat Tyrone, uh-huh. and then I played Paddy. I got a bye into the final because I'm not a professional athlete, uh, and I played Paddy and I beat Paddy. So before we wrap up, will we arm wrestle me versus you? Or if you want, are you any good arm wrestling, Paddy? I'm I not have four and a half to give you. <laughs> <laughs> I already know you're going to fucking destroy me, but will we arm wrestle to uh, wrap we'll things do up? It, yes. Yeah, you sorry, right, swapping seats. Huh? we'll do it now. Yeah, we'll let's do it go. now. Yeah, let's go for it. I think you should just have a fair dig. Just <laughs> happy slap competition. <laughs> right, here we go. So what? I must. I must warn you. I'm a Sylvester Stallone fan, and I've watched over the top. Did you ever watch that movie? Yeah. Well now now that I'm a Stallone fan, I'm a Rocky fan. Was he was yeah. he and a truck driver? He's a truck that? driver uh, and he wins a truck. It's been that Mike right there, party for yourself. Uh we okay, Mike with well, we stuff, yeah. Uh, yeah. so what rules here? Arm behind the back? <laughs> Where do we do it, lads? <laughs> <laughs> now the there's winner, so the much on the line for you. <laughs> there's so much on the line for you and I have nothing to lose, right? Right. But here we go. Give me a chance. Right, Paddy, you wanna count us in? Go. Uh, oh, fuck it. Uh, uh, come on. Are you trying, yeah? I'm trying my fucking hardest. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck it. No. Uh, <laughs> Am I going to shit myself? I was going to say that. <laughs> sure, that's a win. No way. No. Uh, yeah, your fucking background has to touch. I thought it was Tudson. All right, do you know what? I'll, I'll give you it. I'll give you Well done, you fucking. Holy I fuck. just get a bye anyway, don't I? You get a bye. I'm just saying, have a groin soon. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that near killed me. I'm seeing stars, like genuinely. I'm not talking about. We fainting. Seeing you, Paddy. Yeah. Actually seeing fucking stars. You're strong, Sean, to be honest. He does, he does a bit of cheers. I could see how bass had popping out. Oh, his bicep. Was that putting you off a wee bit? Because you were surprised. You staring at it. Fuck's sick. What? Go around Go around this way. Can't see me. Can't see me. I'm that big. Wade facing. <laughs> Stick a Wade facing on landscape. <laughs> <laughs> uh, lads, cheers for coming on. I feel like no we could problem. talk all day. We haven't really even got into your, your comedy... Uh, journey? Your comedy journey yet. Basically, you threw me a bomb. Paddy seen a bit hats on these... Take me under his wing. Yeah. Almost. He'll make a clunt out of it. And, um, <laughs> How long are you doing at the fella? It's not. Paddy's here for five minutes, like, but I ain't going for 55. 55 minutes? <laughs> no, we, we're just we going. Definitely will be. I, I have the travelling community doing the security. <laughs> <out there>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, in terms of like material and stuff, what way are you going to work it? Are you going to do the same couple of minutes to try and build it? Or are you going well, to try th- loads of stuff or what? Um, This week on this show, I'm doing 10 this one so I've got added got extras and then how much material do you have or do you think you have <laughs> I feel like I don't want to sound like I'm being like no not at all no you're not cock anything, you but I feel like years, though, I could, I could friggin up. put together like 20 minutes I could probably put together friggin half an hour yeah just no through loads of see anything I think I've always looked at things from a comedic an- angle. Mm-hmm. So stuff that happens to me every day, even like this morning. Now, because I've done that we show and I've, I think I'm a comedian now, it's like, I could work this in the, a bit. Yeah. So it, it, it's hard getting your mind switched off, isn't it, Patty? I think. I don't I know think, how you feel. Yeah, it is. You're always sort of thinking, and then some days you'll not think, and then another day you're going, that way we work. But I think what Tommy's coming from, Tommy's from West Belfast, and he's from areas that I was from. And Tommy will tell stories and say things, and people go, like that that traveller pulling up at the van to him and telling that story. That's alien to a lot of people. Mm. But that's West Belfast to me. And there's things that Tommy will see and hear and have went through in West Belfast, and he tells the story, people go, no way that happened. But it did. Do you know, it genuinely did. Mm. And I think... If you have a wee bit of ability about you to tell a story, you'll do well in comedy. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what Tommy has. But Tommy has a wee bit of uniqueness um, in terms of, you know, his material and what he says. The and backstory and stuff yeah, too. Yeah, he has a backstory yeah. too. It's a unique perspective, yeah. isn't it? And I was watching this, as I say, I've always been a fan of comedy. I was watching this thing with um, Dave Chappelle. And he said, 
the three things, the ex- ex- advice he got when he was young of an a older comedian was you have to be confident on a stage, have the right thing to talk about, but you don't always have to be funny, you have to be interesting. Mm-hmm. So make sure you have people's interest. Yeah. Like it's not like you have to fucking bang out a joke every two seconds. A lot of comedians closing bits now, especially recently with the whole kind of, with, with a lot of the movements that are on social media, like Me Too and things like that, a lot of comedians closing bits now are really like Stop kind ripping. of personal <laughs> stories. Yeah. Like <laughs> Jerry Springer right. sort of. Yeah. yeah sit down final and thought. Sit, final thought. Yeah. I'm going to be like your... You're a wee trainer. I'm like, wee you're, you're a custom model. I'm gonna have the wee. <laughs> you're me. I'm gonna go <laughs> make a cheese chicken. I'll, I'll do the fairly. <laughs> you know, this is Marciano gave me this cufflink, <laughs> and I'm gonna give it to you. <laughs> You'll be like Graham on the Jeremy <laughs> K show. I'll be screaming at Tommy. <laughs> but I can't take a cufflink. <laughs> but Tommy says to me, I feel like giving boxing up. And I was like, don't. I don't fucking give boxing don't, up yet. Don't see whatever's making yeah. you money at the minute. Or giving you a wage, yeah. don't change it. As Tom McKenna said, he's like, you're either all in or you're not in. And I had, well, I'm hardly going to pack in boxing and start working in Asda to fund a comedy career. And he goes, <laughs> oh, you're a fool. All or not. Be right, fuck it. Well, that's not the way Hang you do Hang your gloves up. That's not the way you do it because it, it's, like, it's, what, it's like an apprenticeship you have to do. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you just and it's, as well, no, we're all slagged and all, but I only have done one gig, like, so... I, know. I can't be getting ahead of myself. I don't know. I'm a well, big thing. But see, at the same time, too, you have a profile, and yes. that's what most comedians are trying, trying to, to build mm. and yes. trying to get yeah. and trying to gain. You already have a profile. So you're already you, halfway there. Same with my wife, Diona. She was the same. You know, she yeah. got a, a profile from acting and then brought it through like TV and yeah. did, like film and stuff like that. So she's just doing stand up now? Like, well, primarily? Mostly, yeah, mostly her bread and butter's through comedy and, and writing comedy, too. But she went from serious acting to now solely. Fucking ninety five percent of her work mm. is through comedy. actual comedy and stand up. Like I, I love boxing. Which is like, flying. Uh, but you can't do it forever. Bo- exactly. Yeah. So. But you can have it as a, it's it's definitely a hustle that you can have going together. You know, mm. as that one's maybe coming till a close in the next lot of years. Because yeah. you can't box until you. Well, well, I don't want to box in the more forties anyway. No, like. you don't want to be getting beat by some wee lot of twenty. But you also don't want to get the forty and have regrets of giving up too early. Yeah, yeah. do you know exactly. what I mean? Yeah. Do when yeah. you lose yeah. a bit of fitness keep, when you get yeah. older? What and I you're was like, saying there, like I go, I why didn't yeah. when I was in my twenties? Give it Cause up. Because in in terms of my boxing career, I'm still in a good position. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. For big fights, and I'm still in the. Like in the world mix, you know. Yeah. So, so see, see, instead of it being the Mac attack, are you gonna change till the Joker? The, the crack Joker? attack. That'd be a good one. That's what you want to be the crack attack. <laughs> the crack attack. The crack attack. <laughs> I don't know. That'd That's be a handy one. Short this, but the back sack next year's Fela. The back sack crack. <laughs> <laughs> next year's Fela. It'll be him supporting you, yeah. and your show will be called Crack Attack. Crack I'm going to go in the boxing. I'm going to go in the burn off the boxing. <laughs> <laughs> All the travellers want to fit me now. Yeah. But you know what, too? You see, with comedy experience, you'll probably be able to sell yourself more Even in terms of yeah. like press conferences and, and stuff, and do you know? Yeah, oh, yeah. well, my, that's what my manager says. He says, look, this is brilliant because yeah. you're raising her profile more the mm-hmm. people who aren't even interested in boxing but like the comedy audience so like, go fuck out go and watch like at Brackville that was a JAA club so loads of them would be sports people mm. and they probably didn't know who I was and they'll go fuck we'll go and watch him now he was up in a club exactly I, I could I could hear the disappointment when he went this guy's at the top of his game he's a boxer <laughs> Tommy McCarthy Right. Who the fuck said? <laughs> I think a lot of them knew who you were. Do you think? They yeah, I, I think, think they did. did. Yeah, of course they, they did. did. Yeah, lads, fucking cheers for coming in. Appreciate it, and we'll get you on again very soon. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for tuning in. This has been the One Two One Two podcast. Give it up for my guest, Paddy McDonald. Thank you, uh, Paddy. Th- Paddy McDonald, um, <laughs> the Crack Attack, Tommy McCarthy. <laughs> I've been Sean Haggerty. See you again next week for another episode. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs>